Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. To find the image diameter of the cell in the electron micrograph, we multiply the actual size by the magnification, then convert it to millimeters. Now, convert 50 millimeters to standard form. It is 5 times 10 in the power of 1 millimeters. P is the nucleus. Q is a chloroplast. R is the cell wall. S is the vacuole. Nucleus, chloroplast, and mitochondrion are double membrane organelles. So the answer is P and Q. Mitochondria and typical prokaryotic cells have 70S ribosomes. 80S ribosomes are found in the cytoplasm and endoplasmic reticulum of eukaryotic cells. Typical prokaryotic cells do not have lysosomes. ATP is the universal energy currency. It is found in both eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. A is wrong because plasmodesmata are only found in plant cells. Plasmodesmata are microscopic channels in plant cell walls that connect adjacent cells, allowing the exchange of substances and communication between them. The Golgi body is found in both cells. C is correct. The centriole is only found in animal cells. A centriole is a small cylindrical structure made of microtubules. They usually exist in pairs and are involved in cell division, helping to organize microtubules and form the spindle fibers that separate chromosomes. Centrioles also play a role in the formation of cilia and flagella. Tonoplast is the single membrane that surrounds the vacuole in plant cells. In cellulose, every other beta-glucose molecule rotates 180 degrees to allow the hydroxyl groups to align properly for bond formation. Cellulose is an unbranched molecule. It only has beta-1 for glycosidic bonds. Cellulose molecules are held together by hydrogen bonds to form microfibules. They associate further to form fibers. Statement 1 is incorrect because peptide bonds form while the amino acids are still attached to tRNA at the ribosome, not after they detach. Statement 2 is incorrect because peptide bond formation is a condensation reaction, not hydrolysis. Water is removed, not added. Statement 3 is correct because peptide bonds link amino acids during protein synthesis, which is essential for growth and each bond formation releases a water molecule. So the correct answer is 3 only. Enzymes like glucose oxidase are highly specific due to the precise shape of their active sites. Although L-glucose is the mirror image of D-glucose, as stated in option D, this mirror image does not fit the enzyme's active site the same way. L-glucose does not have complementary shapes with the active site. B and D describe their relationship. They do not explain the key reason the enzyme doesn't work on L-glucose. Option C is wrong because being a synthetic sugar doesn't affect enzyme activity. What matters is the shape and structure, not how the sugar is made. Neither sucrose nor amylase are a reducing sugar. So, one is incorrect. Sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. Acid hydrolysis breaks down sucrose into glucose and fructose, both of which are reducing sugars. You will get a positive result with Benedict's test after this. Amylase is an enzyme. All enzymes are globular proteins, so Burette's test will give a positive result. In competitive reversible inhibition, the inhibitor molecule binds to the enzyme's active site. It can be overcome by increasing the substrate concentration, which means the maximum resolution rate, Vmax, remains unchanged. Km is the substrate concentration needed to reach half of Vmax. With the inhibitor present, more substrate is required to outcompete the inhibitor, resulting in an increase in Km. To know the affinity of an enzyme, we need to find the Km. A lower Km means half of Vmax can be achieved more easily, indicating that the enzyme has a higher affinity to its substrate. Divide the Vmax of each enzyme by 2 and read their Km values from the x-axis. X has the lowest Km and Y has the highest. So, X has the highest affinity and Y has the lowest. Disulfide bonds are strong. These are covalent bonds that form between the sulfur atoms of two cysteine residues. Hydrogen bonds are weaker compared to covalent bonds. While many hydrogen bonds together provide stability, each individual hydrogen bond is relatively weak biologically 
because it can be broken easily by changes in temperature and pH. Hydrophobic interactions are weak because they are not true bonds, but rather interactions in which nonpolar R groups cluster together to avoid water. Ionic bonds are weak. They are formed between oppositely charged R groups. They can be disrupted easily by pH change. A has all the correct descriptions. B is wrong because hem groups are not composed of amino acids. C is incorrect because each molecule can transport a total of 8 oxygen atoms, or 4 oxygen molecules. D is wrong. The iron ion is part of the hem prosthetic group. It is not surrounded directly by amino acid R groups. The iron is embedded in the center of the hem group. The R groups surround the hem, not the iron ion itself. Facilitated diffusion is a passive movement. It occurs due to the kinetic energy of the substance, causing it to move down its concentration gradient. Cells do not have to supply energy for it to occur. Molecule X moves through a transport protein. It is a polar molecule. A nonpolar substance can move through the hydrophobic region of the phospholipid bilayer without using a transport protein. The protein in the diagram is a channel protein. It is for facilitated diffusion. Since this process does not require energy, it is not affected by the concentration of ATP. The wrinkled surface of cell X indicates that the cell has crenated. This means that there is a net movement of water by osmosis out of the cell. Water moves down the water potential gradient, so the cell cytoplasm has a higher water potential than the solution. Use the formula given to calculate the surface area and volume of each cylinder. Note that the diameter is given here. You have to divide them by 2 to get the radius. Then, get the simplest ratio where volume is expressed as 1. The cylinder with the greatest surface area to volume ratio should take the shortest time to turn yellow. Right after cytokinesis, cells enter the G1 phase of interface. During G1, the cell grows in size, synthesizes mRNA and proteins, and duplicates organelles in preparation for DNA replication in the subsequent S phase. With that said, protein synthesis will occur, and since these processes require energy, ATP is produced too. DNA replication will only occur when the cell enters S phase if the cell needs to divide again. DNA replication occurs in the S phase. The cell continues to grow in the G2 phase. So, W is when the cell has completed DNA replication but not yet reached its maximum size. Chromosomes condense during prophase, the first stage of mitosis. X is the start of mitosis, right before condensation of chromosomes take place. But the cell is ready to start forming the spindle fibers. A shows the formation of spindle fibers hence the increasing length. B is when they reach maximum length. This is when they attach to the centromeres and align the chromosomes at the equator. C shows the shortening of the spindle, since the chromatids separate and move to the opposite poles. D is the end of mitosis. Spindle fibers disassemble, hence the decreasing length. Since the chromatids have arrived at the opposite poles, this is when their centromeres detach from the spindle fibers as the process is completed. mRNA codons form complementary base pairs with the anticodons of tRNA, so the four codons would pair up with UGA, UGG, UGU, and UGC. 3 and 4 specify threonine, and 1 and 2 do not. DNA polymerase catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester bonds between nucleotides. A is correct about the bonds between the complementary base pairs, but its formation does not require DNA polymerase. B and C incorrectly match the bonds and their locations. The coding sequences are called exons. A codon is a sequence of three nucleotide bases in DNA or RNA that specifies a particular amino acid. Introns are the non-coding sequences that will be removed from the primary transcript during the post-transcriptional modification. A primary transcript is the initial RNA molecule produced immediately after transcription from a DNA template. It is the unprocessed RNA molecule that contains both exons and introns. A sink refers to a part of a plant that utilizes or stores the product of photosynthesis. The root storage organ receives sucrose and converts it into storage carbohydrates such as starch. The growing leaf bud and shoot tip require energy, so they receive sugar for respiration. 
cell 1 has a nucleus. The clear space next to 1 is the lumen of the sieve tube element. Those gaps are the plasmodesmata. So, 1 is a companion cell that associates with a sieve tube element. A sieve tube element does not have a nucleus. 2 shows a perforated sieve plate. It is a feature of the phloem sieve tube element. Xylem vessels element do not have any end walls. A is correct. The cell surface membranes of root hair cells are partially permeable. It selectively allows solutes to enter the simplest pathway. B is wrong. Plasmodesmata allow the passive movement of solutes between cells through the simplest pathway, as they are the microscopic channels that traverse the cell walls. Movement into the apoplast involves exiting the cytoplasm, not regulated by plasmodesmata. C is incorrect. The solutes that can't pass through the cell surface membrane will be transported in the apoplast pathway, as they cannot enter the cytoplasm, not the other way around. D is also incorrect. The Casparian strip, which is composed of suberin in endodermal cells, blocks the apoplast pathway, forcing solutes into the symplast. It does not prevent symplast movement. A is a correct statement about adhesion but it does not show how water moves as a continuous column because of transpiration. B is the answer. Cohesion helps water to move together as a result of transpiration pool. C is true about the transport of dissolved mineral ions, but it is irrelevant to transpiration pool. D helps water to stay as liquid. Again, it is irrelevant in this case. The atrioventricular node is located near the septum between the atria and the ventricles. So, the answer is B. X is the point where the pressure in the ventricles becomes higher than the pressure in the atria. This may cause a backflow of blood from the ventricles to the atria. So, the atrioventricular valves close to prevent this. Phagocytes can migrate out of the capillaries into the surrounding tissue to engulf pathogens. Many plasma proteins are too large to pass through the capillary walls and enter the tissue fleet. However, those smaller ones with a relative molecular mass of less than 69,000 can move out. Ions are extremely small. They get squeezed out when filtration occurs. If they leak through the pores in the endothelial cells of the capillaries, they will have to pass through the cell surface membrane of red blood cells, the cell surface membrane of squamous epithelial cells to enter the alveolar wall, and another one to move out. So, there are three in total. One is incorrect. This describes a countercurrent system which does not occur in human lungs. Two is correct. This causes a concentration difference where there is always a higher concentration of oxygen in the alveolar space than in the blood, and the opposite for carbon dioxide. Three is correct. Continuous blood flow ensures that the gradient is maintained, as oxygenated blood is replaced by deoxygenated blood. Cartilage is found in the bronchi and trachea. It provides structural support to keep the airway open and prevent it from collapsing during breathing. Bronchioles have no cartilage because they need to be flexible to allow for airflow regulation and to accommodate changes in lung volumes during breathing. One is correct. The data shows that people with more gold blood cells have more mucus. Two is not true. Smokers who do not have lung disease have more goblet cells than those with lung disease. 3 is correct. Both groups of smokers have greater mucus density than the non-smokers. Mycobacterium bovis causes tuberculosis. People are most commonly infected with Mycobacterium bovis by eating or drinking contaminated, unpasteurized daily products. The causative agents of the other diseases are Vibrio cholerae, HIV, and Plasmodium. 1 is correct. When cross-link formation in the cell wall is prevented, the wall becomes weaker. When water enters the cell by osmosis through the plasma membrane, the cell wall cannot withstand the turgor pressure and lysis. Two is wrong because the bacterial cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan, not cellulose. Three is wrong because the cell wall is fully permeable. Only the cell surface membrane is partially permeable. Statement one is correct. When you deduct the resistant population from the total, you can get the population size of the non-resistant bacteria. It is true that their population size is lower as the antibiotic concentration increases. The proportion of antibiotic-resistant bacteria can be calculated by 
resistance over total times 100. It is true that it increases with the increasing antibiotic concentration. 3 is wrong. 90 mg per dm3 has a higher number of resistant bacteria compared to 215 and 600 mg per dm3. A is wrong because selection should occur before activation. B is correct. Antigen presenting cells help the selection and activation of T helper cells. They release cytokines to activate the B lymphocytes. C and D are wrong because this is about the primary immune response. Memory cells for the specific antigen do not exist. A is incorrect. The antigen binding site is formed by both light and heavy chains, not just the light chains. B is also incorrect. The hinge region in an antibody does provide flexibility, but its function is not to allow binding to different antigens. C is wrong. Those binding sites are on the constant region of the antibody, not the antigen binding site. D is correct. The variable amino acid sequences lead to a unique 3D shape, providing it with the specificity. B lymphocytes fuse with myeloma cells to form hybridoma cells. This is why hybridoma cells can release antibodies and undergo mitosis. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.